So I think I'm going to start doing this uh, based on a suggestion by a friend of mine named Jeremy. Do like a daily vlog. Uh, just going to talk about what I'm doing for the day as far as specifically my my pursuit of knowledge, I'll say, such as you can understand knowledge. So, so this first vlog would just be... Well, I, you know what? I'm just going to talk about what I've been looking at today. Uh, I think in, in vlogs to come, if I continue to do this, in vlogs to come, I'll talk about uh, a little bit more in-depth about where I've come from. But I'm not going to do that for this one. This is kind of like a just a little test vlog. This is what it would be. I'm not going to rehearse or plan or think about anything. I'm just going to start recording and see what comes in my head. So today I'm uh, I have it in my head to get a hold of an understanding of Karl Marx's labor theory of value and uh, Hegel's phenomenology or ph phenomenology of the mind uh, specifically Hegel's uh, dialectic. I'm really trying to understand the core beliefs of the more Marxist, you know, the Marxist, leftist, Leninist, uh, anarcho-capital, or excuse me, anarcho-communists, and you know, that. There's a, I mean, even mutualists. But, but basically, the the larger group, and there's incredible variety of. Uh, beliefs within this this larger group that I'm going to arbitrarily create in my head, which you call the left. I'm trying to understand the left. I believe that I understand the right, especially because I I spent most of my political life, my active political life, I'll say, uh, uh, in, in the right. So I understand the right and some of their core beliefs pretty well. I don't really understand the left and their core beliefs. I mean, I understand the right's perspective of the left, but I've never put, well, I've not put a great amount of time into actually studying the left from their perspective. So I'm trying to understand them just as well as I understand the right. I don't really fit into the left or the right. Uh, I don't know what I call myself. Uh, sometimes I call myself a vis privacium, which is a word I made up. Uh, vis meaning power, previous meaning individual. So I'm a, uh, uh, I am I guess my political ideology is I, I support the creation or the, the I, I support the balance of power being tilted always towards the individual and the free association as opposed to what I would call the coercive enterprise or coercive associations. Uh, you might call it the state, but they're not, I wouldn't necessarily call them the only type of coercive association. Uh, maybe they are, I don't know. But uh, so I'm studying Marx today and I'm, I'm, I'm studying chapter four of Marx's book, uh, Das Kapital. That's my focus, uh, and I'm going to just study that thing until I fully understand it. But it's uh, my my rudimentary understanding of Chapter Four so far is he's preventing a uh, presenting uh, the idea that the uh, that value that the the value. Okay, value, he kind of concedes that value is use value, as he calls it. Use value is, uh, is uh, it's, well, he doesn't use the word subjective. Uh, what does he use? I forget the word he uses, but uh, no, use value is, is subjective or relative. Uh, but then there's something called commodity value, and that commodity value is not subjective. And he goes through this process of showing that uh, if you have wheat, so a certain amount of wheat that trades for a certain amount of iron, a certain amount of ivory, a certain amount of beans, that uh, 
Okay, the wheat itself, it's got all kinds of different values to it, but all the other commodities, they have one value that you can affix to them that, that begins to create a, a universal value in that the amount of wheat. They're all, a certain amount of iron is a certain amount of wheat. Uh, and so, <laughs> uh, say two, two tons of iron equals a ton of wheat. I'll just say that. Uh, and then you have three tons of, 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 uh, ivory equals two tons of wheat. Well, then you can also correlate that three tons of ivory equals two tons of iron, whatever. So the part that I'm still trying to fully understand is, and this part isn't going to make sense yet because it doesn't make sense to me, is the part that somehow he gets you to, uh, you, you strip away use value. Use value doesn't really matter uh, in and of itself. Use value uh, is, is not the measure of value. The only real measure of value is the value of labor the and he would say the value of labor the time that it takes to produce a commodity that's the only real value and uh, although he has qualifiers in that if if you if you produce something you put labor into it and it doesn't have a use value well then it doesn't have it, it's not going to have a commodity value but also, if it has a use value for you, but it's not a use value that others have, then it doesn't have a commodity value. I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to get to it. I, I feel like uh, I feel like I have to get certain core principles down with Marx, especially his labor theory of value. If I can fully understand, articulate, and express the labor theory of value, and I want to be able to express the labor theory of value as far as I can understand it, the way that Marx is portraying it, uh, that if I get that down, then I'll be able to go through the rest of this book and a uh, uh, lot, lot quicker, I think, than I can right now. And I really feel like I really got to get this down. And I'm not sure the degree to which it's because of my lack of understanding and I just need to think about it more, uh, or the degree to which Marx may be making assumptions which he doesn't really back up. I don't know, but I know that uh, in his uh, in in chapter four he has this this notion that you can measure time. The the like you know he 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 answers I guess what he assumes will be a critique. You know if it, if you say that. Uh, uh, the value that uh, comes from the the amount of time that it takes to produce that well then it would be an incentive for the laborer to work slower and create more value and uh, he he uses this this notion of uh, some sort of universal time concept based on principles like the the average amount of time that it takes someone to do it which is based on uh, the the, the skill set of the people that you have the motivation of the people, the conditions, uh, the physical conditions, and the technology, uh, and that I, I don't know how somehow you can figure out all of those things, because there seems to be a lot of subjective qualities that he's kind of proclaiming to be absolute qualities, but and again, I don't fully understand. So, yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Uh, and I haven't gotten to the, you know, maybe I should actually do this at the end of the day because I actually have more stuff I'm going to do next. I'm going to be working on Hegel next and I've been studying and again, I'm still not, not anywhere near fully wrapping my head around the whole, the master slave dialectic and, uh, the thesis, antithesis, synthesis, and, how the, the 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 self is is defined by the other. It's 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 actually the self is defined by a negation of the other, and so there's this battle between the two that produces this ultimate 
and again, I'm probably not articulated fully and clearly because I don't fully understand it yet, but there's this, uh, uh, you produce, you know, one is going to be a master and one is going to be a slave, and the master uh, becomes the master because the master subverts the slave, and the slave becomes about fulfilling the master's identity, but in so doing, the master then becomes dependent upon the slave for his his or her identity, and over time then what happens is the master becomes subverted and the slave gains ascendancy. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. I don't, I don't fully understand it yet. So those are the two things that I'm really, really trying to understand because those two things seem to be, when I hear folks from the left talk, from the widest uh, 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 prism, that that's what they express. They 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 seem to come back to the labor theory of value and uh, Hegel's dialectic, specifically the master-slave uh, dialectic. So, I guess for now, that's probably what these initial blogs will be about in large part. I might talk to some degree about some of the things I'm learning regarding. Uh, software. I'm trying to learn Premiere right now. I'm trying to learn some Adobe software tools to uh, enhance the quality of my content. And I, by the way, this is not an example of like high quality content. I don't, I don't want to, if I'm going to do these daily vlogs, I'm just going to do something simple like this, just using my phone. And I will probably share this on my Facebook page and I'm going to share it on the YouTube video, my personal YouTube video, though, not my my production. My, I have an iState YouTube channel, and I have Futuric YouTube channels, and I'm not going to put this type of content on either one of those. But I will put this on my personal Facebook page, where you can find me, Paul Gordon, and also on my uh, personal YouTube account, which is Paul Gordon. That's... So I am. Yeah. All right. That's it. My name is Paul Gordon. It was a good idea, Jeremy. I, I'm, I might try this again tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see if this ends up being a regular thing or not.